It's a Gundam! Super Draco here, and welcome back to It's a Gunpla, the show where I build Gunpla. Redundant intro, keeping it. Anyway, and this may also be redubbed uh, Gundam 00 Slander for as much as I'm hating on it. At least the anime. So anyway, we're going to continue the arms. So since we're doing the uh, left arm and it's virtually identical to the right, not much to say uh, other than I'm going to talk while this is going on. So first up, uh, I haven't been self-promoting enough. Uh, check out my fantasy story on uh, fictionpress.com. Uh, author name is Super Draco 380, just like on YouTube. Currently, three chapters in a prologue. Anyway, so continuing the Gundam 00 slander, I was talking about how the villains were more interesting. We talked about Graham Aker a little bit. Because there is so much more to talk about in the second season when he became Mr. Bushido. But, you know, and then there's, uh, but then there's Ali al -Sashis, um, who might be the most badass character in all of Gundam 00. Find out that he is the one who brainwashed Setsuna and a bunch of kids into murdering their families and becoming Islamic terrorists. Um, he carried out the terrorist attack that killed Dynamis' pilot Lock-On Stratos, his uh, family. Um, later, he uh, holds uh, the unnamed Islamic, or, well, it wasn't unnamed, but the made-up Islamic nation that believes in peace hostage. After, I believe he kidnapped their, uh, the peace princess, who's a clear ripoff of Relina from Gundam Wing. Except, she literally did nothing unlike the actual Relina. Anyway, uh, and then he showed up during that big battle with that giant mobile armor with a weapon intended to kill Setsuna, leaving the Gundam itself unharmed so they could study it, and almost succeeding, if not for the... Well, let's call a spade a spade. The, I don't swear a lot in this channel, so don't get used to it, but it was bullshit that the throne Gundams just show up out of nowhere. There were no teases. There were no hint drops. There was nothing setting up that there was another team of Gundams. And the fact that they looked so alien and strange, I mean, could you have telegraphed harder that they were going to be used for bad guy purposes? But then to Ali, adding to his badass profile, he killed two of the three throne Gundam pilots, shooting one in the head and stealing his Gundam when he couldn't get a GNX to pilot going into the final battle. But despite the fact that he had never operated this thing before, was so skilled at it, that he had uh, already mastered using it till he was better than the main Gundam pilots. And then going into the final battle, he took out, uh, if I remember right, he destroyed, let's find out, because uh, the or in the season one, the Gundam team, the Ptolemyos had a uh, assault pod for each Gundam that contained like a mobile armor like attachment. And I'm trying to remember if he destroyed Dynamis or not. But yeah, the GN Armor Type D. So if I remember right, 
It was, uh, I believe it was destroyed. It was. It was destroyed uh, by Ali al Sashis in the Thrones Vi. And he incapacitated the Dynamis. And then, you know, through complete bullcrap, Lock-On used a rifle, uh, a rifle-shaped controller to use uh, one of the destroyed rifles from the GN arms to destroy the Thrones Vi, but before it exploded, he fired off a shot, destroying the rifle and killing Lock-On. I mean, that's the inki kind of insane crap that I think is normally reserved for main characters. But despite that, he survived and came back in Season 2. Although in Season 2, he suffered a of a lot of main villains in that he, uh, was diminished from what he once was. And I'm looking it up, and he su suffered extensive burns, so he didn't even suffer any serious injuries. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, Ollie, way cooler, and also the torso of uh, Nadley there is almost complete. Now, the shoulder pads, you know, again, it's supposed to be naked, which is why a lot of the untouched white doesn't bother me. But the shoulder pads just look like a sea of nothing. So, let's get my uh, lining pen and we're going to touch that up a bit. And again, using the same technique as before to wipe off the excess paint, again, it's better to use um, a Q-tip, a cotton swab, whatever you want to call it, or something of that nature rather than your fingers, but... But anyway, but you know, Natalie, it's a very interesting look because it's not often you see a mobile suit with long lustrous hair even if it is impractical in every sense of the word my editing software had a minor bug so i'm trying to continue my thought from before so ali al uh great character but a victim of the trope of the villain falling off after uh, or after his first defeat And it's weird, because Ali, um, you know, in the beginning when they introduced him, he was supposed to be a, a villain for Setsuna, and then they shifted it to a villain to lock on. And, yeah, the terror attack killed Lock-On's family. Justifies Lock-On hating Ali, but... In my opinion, there just wasn't enough screen time for this to be meaningful. But that's a critic. That's a me nitpicking uh, more than criticizing. So then, your final rival in the first season was uh, Soma Paris, who turns out to be, uh, uh, I believe her name was Marie Pafashi, who was. Uh, 
uh, Alleluia slash Hallelujah Haptisms, uh, they were both in a lab together being experimented on. And her weird father-daughter relationship with Sergei through the first season, as well as her trying to avenge all the men that they lost uh, in the various uh, battles with the Gundams. I mean, and, and it was good. And they actually did some fairly decent character development with Hallelujah. Well, not Hallelujah, with Hallelujah. But then they just had this whole weird thing where they it, they just dropped it in the middle of se or early into season two, because um, Alleluia had taken up drinking and being friendly with Sumeragi and her uh, almost comically oversized chest. But then in season two, they're picking back up, and then. You know, they Soma Paris joins the crew to avenge Sergei's death, and then it's like pfft, all that development's out the window. No, they're, and they don't build on it. They don't do anything with it. It just happened, and that was frustrating about the relationships in Gundam Double. Stuff happened, and then there was never any fallout from it or blowback. Anyhow, thanks for watching. Uh, see you for the next part. Check me out on Fiction Press.